Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen with BassResource.com. No, I am not filming a cooking show. Uh, this is actually where my fluke fishing starts. Um, everybody's gotten a pack of flukes or soft jerk baits, or trick worms for that matter. We'll talk about it in, in just a minute. And you pull them out of the bag and they're all cockeyed and scrunched up like that because they've fallen down in the bag. They've fallen down in the bag like this. So when they look like that, you got to do something about it or these things just don't fish right. They don't, they, they don't track right when you're throwing them, throwing them weightless. Um, I do this with flukes, I do it with trick worms, um, or anything else I'm going to fish weightless or on a Carolina rig. Just to make sure that they track exactly right, it prevents uh, uh, twisting your line and it also makes the, uh, the bait look more realistic. Okay, start off with boiling a, a, a pot of water, um, get it all the way up to a boil, and then you take your fluke, okay, and you ultimately want it to look straight, just like that. You take your fluke and you dip it in the water for 20 seconds. Or 15. It kind of started straightening out when I put it in there. Then you lay it down upside down on the towel. I'm going to hold my finger right where that bend was. Keep it flat up against that towel until it cools off. It doesn't take long to cool off, just a few seconds. Check it. And look at that. You got a perfectly straight fluke. Okay. The thicker the plastic, see if there was a bend up in here, it would take a little bit longer. That's usually where I, I put it in there for 20 seconds. But if I just put it in there for about 15 seconds for that, the thinner part of the tail, works just fine. The risk is, is melting the soft plastic. So you really got to, I wouldn't go any longer than 20, 20 seconds. Um, and uh, and then, the, then you just lay it down on the towel, uh, shape it out right, and let it sit there till it cools completely. Then when you put it back in the bag... You just very carefully lay it down in the bottom of the bag and then as anal retentive as I am I, I make sure that it sits upright in in the box that I put my soft plastics in and if I pull one out of the bag and it's and it's jacked up I just put it aside I don't fish with it I put a straight one on the hook and I go fishing all right let's take it out to the lake I'm gonna show you guys how I fish a fluke maybe I'll catch a few fish in it we'll see how it goes all right just made it out to the lake I got my fluke, spent all that time uh, getting them straight in, in the pan, so I really want to make sure I put them straight on the hook. The hook I'm using is a, an offset, 5 odd offset round bend. Um, it's not a wide gap. There's no reason for a wide gap. I mean, look at this. That's all the plastic that, that hook's got to come through. Bass bites that, that uh, falls down just like that, you got plenty of hook right there. Okay, same thing the other way. I, I rig mine upside down sometimes. Sometimes I rig it you know, right side up. Just all depends on how I feel and how I think the bass want it. Uh, you get a different action both ways. Um, but uh, a fluke is so stinking versatile. I mean, you could use it for a Carolina rig. You can use it on a Texas rig. Um, I've, I've put it on a drop shot. I've put it on just about any pla soft plastic rig that you can think of. And I've caught fish and been successful with it um, because it just mim mimics a bait fish. But uh, when I was first getting started fishing, this was my go-to bait. It's the only thing I knew. And that's kind of how my nickname came out as, as Flute Master because during those, those years, that's all I wanted was to be able to uh, be able to master one bait. And I felt like I got to the point where I was really good at a fluke and I could catch bass a lot with it. So Really easy when they're schooling though. swung at it. I hooked him outside of his mouth. A bad little fish. And they are right here at the boat. But it's so important that you rig this straight on the hook make sure it stays straight just like with any worm you want your plastic to be straight um, you get the best action you get the, you get the best erratic 
you're able to walk it, you're able to, to uh, make it swing from side to side under the water, all kinds of stuff. Um, good grief, there's a school of fish under me. I'm in 25 feet of water, it's a massive school. But uh, other things you can do, you can pitch it into the cover, you can do, I mean, I remember walking the bank of, uh, of the public fishing area I grew up on, and I would sneak up on spots and cast out that it was a baby bass fluke, not the super fluke, not the uh, super fluke junior, but the fluke that doesn't have the slit in it. And I just throw it out and just give it a little quick pop and let it sink to a little bit and pop and let it sink and all of a sudden some fish would come out of nowhere and grab it. Um, it's a very good first bait to learn, at least it was for me. But uh, it's because it's so versatile. What I'm doing right here, let me kind of explain what I'm doing. I've got a hump, and I've got schooling fish out in front of me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go across the lake here in just a minute and try. There's a spot they were schooling at the other day in, in 50 feet of water. And right now I'm in 33 feet of water, and I've got them schooling up on this hump. What they do is they take and they push these bait fish, or actually my boat is scaring a school of bait fish up onto this hump, and the bass are on top of the hump, and they're just absolutely. Oh, I had one hit the swivel absolutely annihilating these little bait fish. The problem is, is these bait fish are about an inch long. They're not there very long at all. So it's, it's hard to get a bass to see this bait and to grab it right now. But I can catch one or two. You guys saw I just caught that, that one. But uh, that's all I'm doing. I'm gonna do this for a little bit, see if I can catch another fish, close out this video. This probably will not be my last uh, fluke video. I can guarantee it. So just stay tuned. Let's see if I can catch another one. And you notice I'm throwing this on a bait caster. You can put it on a spinning rod. That's just fine. All right, let's talk about cadence. Everybody thinks, you know, the only way to fish a fluke is to pop, pop, pause it, pop, pop, pause. That's all I've heard on the forums for years. And, and yeah, that's a good way of catching fish. And you kind of play around with how long you pause it, how many pops you make it, things like that. Figure out what the bass want. But sometimes they don't want it popped at all. Sometimes they just want it swam just like this. Just like that. And sometimes they want it skipped across the surface. So you cast it out, just like a buzz bait, you immediately st start doing this and you just shake your rod tip up high, right across the surface like that. Okay. One of my favorite things to do with a fluke, especially when it's cloudy skies like this and you know I'm fishing a white fluke and the skies are white so the bass don't get a good, good, uh, good look at it. I do one real quick thing. Let's take some JJ's magic chartreuse and I just dip the tail something to get their attention and I get everything wrapped up around my rod there we go skip 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 and pause skip 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 and pause let it sink a little bit and that's when they'll hit it See them skipping across the surface, they'll come up and look at it and chase it a little bit, and then you pause it and let it sink. If you hear a hundred times, the, the uh, bass will hit a fluke or hit something when it's falling or when it's stopped and falling. big or I just got him foul hooked. He ain't that big because I saw him come out of the water to hit this, but oh, that's a spot. That's a spotted bass. I haven't caught one of those on here in a while. There ain't that many of them on this on this lake. Look at that, I got the camera all jacked up. It's a a fluke can be pretty deadly. It was my first confidence bait. It's still a confidence bait for me. I love them. I absolutely love them. But uh that's a spotted bass. Let me do a real quick lesson for those of you guys. Okay, a largemouth bass's jaw, when you close the jaw on the largemouth bass, it extends past the eye, okay? It'll extend out to here. See that spotted bass? It extends to the very back of the eye, and that's it. Another check is some, most of the time they have a little patch right there on their tongue. You see that? And it's a rough patch. 
All right, and also look at their markings. They got these lines right here and stuff like that, but they always have these little bitty spots below the, the uh, lateral line. Spotted bass. A lot of fun to catch. All right, guys, like I always say, visit BassResource.com for the answer to all your questions about bass fishing. And have a great day.